Hello everyone, happy new year, it's the new year. <laughs> uh, Dana Cole here and today in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can extend your backdrop, um, two different ways how you can extend your backdrop using my digital backdrops. And of course this also works uh, for your regular images with no um, digital backdrops etc. So the first way I'm going to show you guys is how you can do it with generative fill. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can do it with the content aware feel. So both of these are done in Photoshop. Um, so let's start with um, the generative field. Okay, so I'm going to use this particular image from one of my digital backdrop sets. Um, so what we're going to do first is the, the size of this one. So I'm going to go up to image, image size, and it's going to tell me that this one is 75 um, width by 8500 height. So um, I want to extend this one to the left. So I want it to be a little bit more landscape. So I'm maybe going to take it up to 85, 85. Actually, that's going to make it a square crop. Um, but if I go um, 9000 by 8500, that's going to make it a little bit more landscape. But let's just do 85, 85. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go up to file and go to new and I already have one here that's 85 by 85 but if you don't um, you can type in the measurements you want here um, and then go from there uh, a white backdrop is fine because we're not going to see the backdrop okay so I'm going to hit create okay so now we have my new layer which is 85 by 85 and we have my um, current backdrop here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this over to here, like so. And I'm just going to minimize this now because we don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to maximize this. Okay. So now we have our main backdrop. And I'm just going to move it over to the right side as much as possible to the edge. And then we have our portion here with some added room here, with some added room here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go up to the marquee tool and the rectangular one is perfectly fine for this. Now you want to sample some of this. So the uh, generative field knows what you want to fill in. Okay. So maybe around this much. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now we have our selection here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit generative fill. And it gives you an option to type something in, but in this instance, you really don't have to. It's going to know what you want to do because you selected some of this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. And it's just working. Okay, so this is what the generative field did. Now it's going to give you three different options. So this is what the first one looks like. Let's see what the second one looks like. Okay, and then let's see what the third one looks like. Okay, so of these three that it generated for me, I would say I like the second one better, maybe this one. Or let's see. So I'm trying to get the one that's more closest to the color that's going on here, um, the lighting, differentials, etc. Uh, so maybe, actually, maybe the third one. Yeah. So if um, it generated three that you did not like, you can always hit it here again to generate three more. And I'm just going to do that so you guys can see because it might not get it um, as close as possible in the first three and you might want to try again. Okay, so now it, it, I have three more options and they just went right on top of these. Okay, so let's see what those look like. This is the first one and I actually kind of like that one best at the most. Uh, this one no. And this one though. So maybe number four is the best one, I think. Yeah. So we're going to go with number four. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so now we have this here. As you can see, um, there's some blank white space at the top, and this one here is a little bit uh, unaligned as well. So we're going to make sure we have this layer selected, and then we can go up to Edit, Free, Transform. And then you can just pull this up a bit to where you'll see the pink line, which means it's aligned um, at the top where it needs to be. And that should have aligned it here as well. You can also extend it up a little bit higher if you want it to, but that's up to you. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and press uh, the check mark or enter. Okay. So now we have extended this here. Um, something the generative field does at times, it can make, um, it can make your image a little bit, I don't want to say blurred, but not as sharp or not as much noise as was in the original. Um, so here I can see it's a little less noise here than it was here. So I could then just go up to my filter, um, noise, and maybe add some noise to where it looks um, more like what it was. So here is where it was, and I think taking it up to around 11 looks good it looks more like this now okay i'm just going to toggle so before after before after and i'm going to hit okay all right so that is how you and then once you're done with that if everything looks good if you don't want to extend it anymore el anywhere else then you're good you can go ahead and flatten um these flatten this image and then you can save it and now you have extended the backdrop um, a bit more to give you more space, whatever the case may be. And that's how you can do it in generative field. So I'm now going to show you how you can do it with content aware. Because not everyone has the Photoshop beta yet with generative field, but you should have it. Uh, you should have content aware um, if you have the latest Photoshop. So let's go back a little bit. I'm not going to go back all the way to the beginning. So I'm going to go here, actually here. Okay, so I'm taking it back to where we almost started with pulling in the backdrop onto a new layer because that part's going to be the same. Okay, so let's also again go ahead here and select a portion of the backdrop and where we want to extend it to. Okay, so now we have our selection again using the marquee tool or rectangular marquee tool. And we're not using generative field, so this is just here, but we're not using that. So we're going to go up to content aware field. So let's go up to edit. And here you will see content aware field, which is right uh, above generative field. And let's hit it. Okay, so you will have this little window pop up over here and it will kind of show you what it's going to look like when it's done. Okay, so I didn't select very well uh, at the bottom, but we can fix that uh, shortly. And it's also selecting a little bit of the heart. So we don't really need that portion because this is good here. So as you can see, it has a little subtract on the circle. Um, if you click Alt, it will Alt or Shift, I think, in Mac, it will do a plus. We want to subtract because we want to take away. So I'm just going to remove the portion that's um, that's highlighted, that's selected, sorry, the um, hearts because we don't need any of that. Okay. Here, I'm going to take it out here. Yeah. And maybe here too, don't need too much. Okay, so you will see it will change a little bit here on the portions that you deselected. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press apply. And as you can see, it's applied it. And then I'm going to press OK. Okay, so this is how it looks now using Contents Aware Fill. I'm just going to take the rectangle away so we can see it a bit better. Um, again, I missed out on some portion here. So what I can do is go back to edit, free transform, and just bring that down a little bit and then bring this back up so it, the lines match here. 
and press OK. And now I again have extended the backdrop um, a little bit more to the left so I have more space to work in with this particular backdrop. Um, so that's another way that you can extend your backdrop. For this particular one, I think for this particular backdrop, I think I like um, what Content Aware Field did uh, more than Generator Field. Sometimes it will be one way and sometimes it will be the other way. So you just have to kind of try and test to see which one works great for your image that you're working on at that moment um, or backdrop, etc. And then that's pretty much it. I hope you found this educational. Um, if you have any questions that popped up in your head after you saw this, feel free to leave them below and I will answer them if I can. And I hope you guys have a good new year and I will try to be much more active with my YouTube channel this year. All right. See you guys. Bye.